Amanda Knox pleads to go home, but her fate is in the hands of an Italian jury. And what about the victim? Meredith Kirch's family speaks out just hours before the ruling is expected. Amanda Knox may have lost her faith in Italian police, but she has put her future in the hands of an Italian court. The American student and her former boyfriend, Raffaella Solicetto, convicted of murdering Knox's roommate, Meredith Kircher, are waiting for a decision on their appeal. First Solicetto, then Knox, made their pleas to court. I want to go back home. I want to go back to my life. I don't want to be punished, to have my life, my future taken away from me for things that I haven't done. Because I'm innocent. I am innocent. Raphael is innocent. And we deserve freedom because we have done nothing to deserve this. I have high respect for this court, for the care they have taken in this process. And I would like to thank you. Well, two judges are guiding the deliberations of the six other jurors as they decide on the many options before them. Senior international correspondent Matthew Chance joins me now with more on what we can expect in the next few hours. Um, this woman, Amanda Knox and Raffaella Solicetto, could know in a couple of hours, Matthew, whether or not they are to be freed or they remain in jail. Um, a lot of expectation about what she was going to say today, how she would say it. Uh, what was your impression? Well, I was in the court, as you know, when Amanda Knox uh, walked in. She looked very stressed. She looked very pale, much more so than usual as she was escorted uh, by the guards to her seat in the court. Uh, when she stood up uh, to make what must have been one of the biggest speeches of her life, uh, she was very emotional indeed. Uh, for uh, And on a number of occasions, she had to sort of choke through uh, the tears to, to, to get out the words she was trying to say. At one point, the judge said that she could sit down if she wanted to. But she didn't. She remained composed and turned to the jury and the judges and said that she was innocent. She said she'd lost a friend in Meredith Kircher and she said that her, as you mentioned, and, and Raffaella Solecito, her former boyfriend, had nothing to do with the, with the killing of Meredith Kircher uh, whatsoever. Afterwards, uh, the parents of both Solecito and Knox uh, came out the court. I tried to have a word with them. Uh, neither of them were prepared to comment uh, as the jury deliberates on, on, their, uh, on their decision. Uh, but across town in Perugia, the family of the British murdered girl, Meredith Kircher, uh, did give a news conference and they made it clear that they wanted these murder convictions to be upheld. Take a listen. What everyone needs to remember um, is what Mum and I were talking about earlier, the, the brutality of what actually happened that night and... Everything that Meredith must have felt that night, everything she went through, the fear and and the terror and not knowing why. Um, and she didn't deserve that. No one deserves that. Well, for Nula, it will be at least another two hours, according to the court, before the, the jury has prepared its decision. Uh, we're expecting to hear what they decide about Amanda Knox and Raffaella Solicito sometime early this evening. And talk to us a little more about the makeup of this jury. Four lay jurors, we're told, and two judges. Well, how does the process work and what can we expect when they get back into court? Well, well actually, there are five men on the jury. Uh, sorry, uh, five women on the jury and three men. Two of the men are professional uh, judges. They, they'll uh, be deliberating, obviously, until they find a verdict. Though, as I say, we're expecting that to come before um, before midnight. I was watching them very closely inside the courtroom when both Amanda Knox and Raffaella Solecito, who also gave an address and appeal for his innocence uh, to the court today, and they were listening absolutely intently, especially when Amanda was Amanda Knox was speaking. Uh, they, they appeared to be, you know, getting quite emotional at times when they were listening to her pleas to be set free, to restart her life, uh, and, to, and, to, and to go back to the United States. The fact that she spoke in very good, fluent Italian as well, may have had some kind of 
an impact. Uh, she's obviously been in prison uh, for several years here. She's used that time well, I suppose, to uh, learn the Italian language very well indeed. And that could have endeared her uh, to, to the jury somewhat. They may be more sympathetic. There's also the other evidence that they will, of course, be uh, considering, not least the DNA evidence, which independent experts appointed by this court have said is unreliable and unsound. And so I, I think if they're looking for a reason to set Amanda Knox and Raffaella Solecito free, they may have plenty of options to find it, Fanula. All right, we'll have to wait and see. Matthew Chance, though, reporting live from Perugia. We'll, of course, have more on the Amanda Knox case for you a little later in this programme. We'll be taking you to the prison where Knox and her co-defendant, Raffaella Solicetto, are housed. Amanda is good. She's calm. She is praying and singing songs in the chapel. She is being allowed to stay there with Father Sorrow. She is calm, very, very calm. She says, unfortunately, I have some terrible hours ahead of me because I have to wait. The deliberations in these cases are tough but I am still calm. Does she have hope? Absolutely convinced she will. It's interesting here that the, the hours are now winding down and her wait may be over. Now, the judge had said he'd expect it in about an hour and a half to come back. We'll see if they come through these prison doors. Fanula, I just want to show you, um, through those prison doors, that's where the cars come through. That's where they would come through to go back to the court and back again, even if she is three, she, freed. She has a couple of hours of administration to do here if that happens. She could then either walk out as a free woman where that blue sign is uh, and just absolutely walk out of this prison or be escorted out in a car, but in a private car, and then would be a free person. And this is what she hopes is going to happen. Fanula? Of course, we should point out to viewers that uh, what's being debated at the moment is whether her verdict is overturned and she does walk free, whether indeed it's uh, uh, kept as the guilty verdict as it is and she remains in prison, or even indeed uh, the possibility that her sentence might be increased should uh, the jury go that way. But let me ask you about the demeanour of the family. You've been covering this case since it started, Paula, four years ago. Uh, the demeanour of her family, the Knox family, how does it compare to the original trial? Well, it's interesting. They've certainly maintained their composure. They do have cases against them for slander about things they had said about the investigation and police. They are much more careful now, but they have been dignified and above all, Fanula, they have supported their daughter the whole way. There is no doubt about anybody in that jury that the family is behind Amanda Knox. But this also does juxtapose against the family of Meredith Kircher. They gave a press conference a couple of hours ago. Fanula, I can't tell you how dignified that family has been and how respectful of the process, never once criticizing it and trying not to criticize anyone, not even the family of Amanda Knox, except today they did say that they were coming up against a very large PR machine. They say that they will respect um, whatever ruling the jury comes up with in a few hours. Fanula? All right, on that note, we leave it there, Paula Newton, outside the uh, prison in Perugia, where for the moment both Raffaella Solicito and Amanda Knox are being held. It's been Amanda Knox's home for the last four years since she was found guilty. Solicito is there simply for the day to hear uh, the ruling of, of this appeal. Um, and as Paula mentioned, the family of Meredith Kircher spoke out a little while ago, earlier in the day, um, talking about why they've maintained a low pro profile and asking people not to forget who was the victim in this terrible crime. I think it's difficult to sort of speak of forgiveness at this point. Um, as I say, four years on the one hand is a very long time. Um, on the other, it's it's not, you know, it's still very, very raw. And as Stephanie was just saying now, because of all the sort of hype around the case uh, and the defendants involved in that, not only is just the fact that Meredith's been forgotten, but as Steph says, that you know, the actual brutality of it. Um, you know, I, I believe the, the photographs were shown in court this or last week. Um, I think there were some accusations of that perhaps being sensationalist. But really, you know, that was in part just to sort of reinforce, as we sort of say, how horrific that really was. And, you know, I, I think if you had them up here now and we were all looking at that, I think, you know, every one of you would find it quite hard to forgive the person who did that to your sibling or, or daughter, really. They decide today based purely on what the information available to them um, and they, they don't look into, you know, as we were just discussing the media hype, then, then justice will hopefully be found. Whichever way that may be, we, we'll have to deal with that this evening. But for now, we, we just have to wait and see. 
And you can learn more about the appeals trial in Italy by logging on to our website, that's cnn.com. There you'll find details on how the four-year-old trial unfolded. There are links also to video from inside the courtroom in Perugia. And you can see Matthew Chance's exclusive look at Amanda Knox behind the bars. That's all at cnn.com. And of course, we understand there could be a decision or a ruling um, within two hours at the earliest.